Hello, I'm Scott Matson. I'm a maker. Welcome to the channel and thanks for tuning into this video. This one is extra special to me. At the time of making this wine box, it was all for the purpose of being used in the wedding ceremony to my now wife. The ceremony did end up being everything we could have hoped for. This wine box didn't turn out 100% perfect. It had some blemishes and stubborn things that my eye notices. We're usually our own worst critics though. Overall, I'm really pleased and my wife absolutely loved it, and to me that's a win. I initially started with cedar wood as you saw and then cut everything out, gave the design a test run and just kind of reworked some things. The hand tools here are absolutely intentional, as I told myself that this needed to be a labor of love. The only power tool I did use was a power sander, everything else is solely by hand. This project really only requires a few tools, first being a saw. It could be a hand saw, circular saw, table saw, band saw, jig saw. Straight cuts are always important, but especially so in box making. You can see me lining a few things out, matching the grain. You'll probably also want a sander for this project too, as I mentioned, maybe a mallet and a chisel as well. That's really about it. One of the amazing things that I like about design and building things is that really the design can and often does change during the making of. What you initially may have planned and drawn or sketched out may not become the final product. Just do what feels right and follow your creativity and shift when need be. Also do potentially build it out of scrap wood like I did with that cedar first. This in my mind is the most crucial step in the process. It should take up the majority of your time. Those cuts are easy. But the sanding and the finishing, you really want to spend some time on. My obsessive nature really comes out when I do get a sander in hand. That, and it's just really, well, therapeutic to sand things. Depending on the wood you have and its cut and roughness, you'll probably start with a 120 grit or so, and work your way down to 220, then 320, potentially even further. I highly recommend that you don't overlook this crucial step though. During the sanding and the finishing process, uh, in between sanding and adding your coats of finish, doing your glue up, etc., comes the potential to chisel away any excess wood. Again, it's not completely crucial to cut your boards by hand like I did, but just make sure the box does fit together well. I cut certain boards slightly oversized on purpose. I just wanted it all to fit like a glove and then I chiseled away what I need, needed to as I saw fit. During the glue up, it's always a good idea to have a wet rag nearby to wipe up the glue as it's still wet. That'll just save you a lot of time in sanding later. We're about to clip to the cedar box, and as I said, the design did change on this project. But I just wanted to show you um, kind of a little tip or a piece of advice that I like to follow when I'm gluing joints together. If you find that there's space and you have some excess sawdust laying around, just mix that in with the glue, put it on the seams of the joints and rub it in. Again, I did do this with the walnut, I just failed to film that. Enjoy the sanding. Get a little zen if you feel like it. Make sure everything fits well. Keep sanding. Another thing that's good to have laying around when finishing projects is a tack cloth like this. It can wipe away any excess sawdust before you start finishing. 
I'm using Watco Danish oil here. It really does a great job of finishing a piece like this. Apply the coats liberally, letting them dry in between. I'd recommend at least two thorough coats of Danish oil on this wine box. The idea behind this wine box and how it can be used in a wedding ceremony kind of goes like this. You build this box, preferably in purest and romantic fashion, solely by hand, and then you get a bottle of wine, and then you write letters to each other. You put it all in this box, and then during the ceremony, you seal the box. The thought is that during your five-year anniversary, you'll open this box, enjoy the wine, and read the love letters to each other. If you come upon a rough patch in your marriage, though, open it up sooner. Thank you guys for coming to the channel and checking this video out. I hope you enjoyed watching this process. I'm not a professional by any means, but I definitely had a blast making this. And it's really one of the most special projects I've made to date. I've put together a blog post to accompany this video. The post includes some extra details, photos, and more. Be sure to check it out over at whiskeywoodcreations.com and hit that subscribe button. I've got a lot of other cool projects coming up. Take care.